Welcome to Expedition Casts. I'm David Guggenheim, the Ocean Doctor. In the summer of 2007, Greenpeace led an expedition to Alaska to explore the two largest underwater canyons in the Bering Sea. If you want to live at the bottom of the Bering Sea, you've got to figure out how to live in ice-cold water and in complete darkness. But it doesn't end there. You've got to figure out how to hang on in a very powerful underwater current. Even with our state-of-the-art submarines, this strong underwater current made it very difficult to maneuver. It made trying to film and collect this deep sea coral a bit more difficult. I'm using my thruster to hold me on the bottom. This is very, very difficult. It's like walking, chewing gum, and uh, calculating pi all at the same time. If you're a fish and a strong swimmer, you can swim against the current, but that takes a lot of energy. But if you're a flat fish, like a skate, or a halibut, or a flounder. You just have to lie down on the bottom and let the current wash over you. It soon became clear that we had entered the domain of the flat fish. The bottom was full of hundreds of depressions where flat fish had rested. But as my sub passed over some of these holes, I saw hundreds of little red eyeballs looking back at me. It soon became clear that something as innocuous as the shallow hole where a fish had been resting was sanctuary for thousands of critters, in this case, shrimp. Not only does living in a fish hole mean that you don't have to fight the current, but little eddies forming as the current runs by cause food particles to drop out of the water column. So if you're a shrimp, you can kick back, not lift a claw, and let the food come to you. From time to time, this vast landscape of flat fish and flat fish holes was interrupted by objects that didn't seem to belong here at 1,800 feet below the surface. They looked a bit like meteorites, each surrounded by a wide, shallow crater they're not from outer space, but many have traveled a vast distance on Earth. They're called drop stones, and it's icebergs that do the dropping. As glaciers move across the land, rocks become incorporated into the glacial ice. Once the glaciers find the coast, they calve into icebergs and travel vast distances floating upon the ocean, melting along the way and eventually releasing their rocky payload. One might think of a rock, even a big one, falling to the bottom of the vast Bering Sea as one of the more inconsequential events in the universe. But if you're tiny, living in a world that's flat and unprotected from the swift Arctic current ripping by, even a tiny pebble can mean the difference between survival or not. So if one day, at the bottom of the Bering Sea, a huge rock comes plummeting out of the sky, it's like a deluxe condominium suddenly appearing, and the shrimp don't waste a moment moving in. Man, that is like shrimp city. In some cases, we even found shrimp getting on the downstream side of a fish, like this largemouth sculpin. The penthouse was reserved for critters like basket stars and corals, anemones, sponges, or hydroids that could attach themselves firmly and then grab prey as they floated by in the current. We also saw lots of octopus. And if you're a fish who isn't lucky enough to be flat, a drop stone is going to be a great place to hang out. We found lots of fish hanging close to these rocks, especially rockfish. 
festooned with all sorts of sea life, the drop stones became explosions of color, as if the inhabitants are showing off, saying, hey, look what we can do if we just have something to hang on to. It's quite remarkable in nature how little things matter, like where a rock falls or a flatfish rests. And there are big things in this world that threaten those little things, like taking too many fish from the sea, and global warming, which is already believed to be changing the patterns of the ice pack, along with distant glaciers and the would-be drop stones that they encounter. It's important for us to think about what it takes, even the seemingly little things, to make an ecosystem work, especially one as wondrous and important as the Bering Sea.